emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to a brief instructional slash demonstrational video. Couldn't think of the word then. Now, if you're anything like me, and I hope you're not because I'm a raging idiot, but if you're anything like me, then like me, you will completely suck at airbrushing varnishes. Now I know I use my Pledge Floor Care Finish two times more shine, two times more shine, all the time. Uh, but I use that as a as a utility coat, like for decals and weathering. But I, d I can spray that. That's fine. That's idiot proof. And for matte varnishes, when I need a matte varnish, I do use my beloved acrylic Humbrol 49. No, I'll get that right. Humbrol acrylic 49 matte varnish, which is idiot proof. So it's great for me. The downside to using the 49 is it's a rattle can. So you have to do it outdoors. You can't do it indoors because everybody else in the house will kill you and just rip your spleen out. And you have to make sure the weather's right. If it's too damp or too hot or too wet or humid or anything like that, it's going to go terribly wrong. So you have to get the weather right. And it does mean that when it comes to winter time and autumn times, where here in the UK it's basically rain central, you find you, a lot of days you can't go outside and do anything. So you have, tend to have models piling up waiting to be varnished. So I've been spending a long time trying different varnishes out to try one that I can airbrush. And so far, Everything I've tried, I've been terrible at. Now, it's not a problem with the varnishes. I've just not got the hang of them. It just won't stick in my brain for some reason. So I've kind of given up for a while, but then I've been hearing buzz about these. These are the Ammo by Mig Lucky Varnishes. What I thought I'd do is uh, I've got the, the good chaps at eModels to send me these. So I can have a look at these and give these a try. We have four. We have the Ultra Matte Lucky Varnish. We have the Matte Lucky Varnish. We have the satin and we have the glossy. Uh, now I'm hoping, especially for personally for me, for the matte and ultra matte, because if I can if I can use these and you know I can get them to work for me, then for all intents and purposes, I can kind of stop using the, the Humbrol 49. Although there will always be times when I want to just quickly matte varnish something, and if I know the weather's fine, I can bop it outside and do it. But for, for other projects, there'll be times when I need to do it through the airbrush. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give these four a try. Now I have four pieces of plastic card here that I have painted uh, just with the grey colour. I was going to do them black so that because black shows up shine and matte really nice, but that will kill the white balance. So I've gone for a neutral sort of grey colour. Uh, we've got one for ultra matte, one for matte, and one for satin and one for glossy. And as you can see, uh, they're all untouched at the moment. They're just fairly bland grey. They've got a little bit of a satin sheen to them by themselves. It's a Tamiya rattle can. Uh, I can't remember which grey it was, but it's a Tamiya rattle can grey. And that's just got a bit of a satin sheen. They're all the same. Exactly the same. So what I shall do is I'll go and get the spray booth set up uh, and we'll give these a go. Now I'm not going to show you me applying every single varnish because I'm going to use the same technique for all of them. I'll give them all. Well, I'll see. I'll, I'll judge it by eye. Uh, I'll say probably two to three coats just to see, but I'll judge it by eye. If, if the matte one looks really, really matte after two coats or one coat, then I won't bother. If the glossy one looks super glossy after one coat or two coats, I'll just do one or two. So we'll see. But I'll aim to do three and see how they come out. So I'll go and get everything ready. Uh, we'll have a quick whiz through the airbrushings and then when we come back, we'll see how they did. So back in a moment. Okay, now whenever you're spraying a varnish, especially gloss varnishes, do take time out to spray some good old fashioned water around your spray booth. Just mist it around, any kind of like spray bottle will do. The reason you want to do that, and you can see like, the tissue at the bottom of mine is all moist. The reason you want to do that is the dampness will actually collect any dust that's floating around. It'll stick the dust to the walls and the floor, make life easier. So we're going to start with the ultra matte. And I'm going to be using my TRN1 trigger airbrush, but any airbrush will do. It's a 0.35 nozzle. First thing you want to do is shake it, shake it, shake it, baby. Matte varnishes are just gloss varnishes with matting agents. If you don't mix them correctly, you end up with a satin or a gloss varnish. I know this from experience because my real life car is matte on one side and satin on the other because we didn't actually shake or mix the uh, matte clear coat well enough. Yeah, I know about that. It's, I know about that very well. Thank you very much. Anyway, 
Here we go, just cracking on. We're just gonna do, as it says on the on the bottle, on the label, thin, misty coat. And that's the beauty of these products. For the first time I'm aware of, Amazon's actually telling you how to use their products. So all you need to do is thin, mist coats and do multiples of these to build it up. Don't be tempted to go heavy after one or two coats. Now the first few coats will look a bit weird and bobbly and they'll be lumpy and bumpy. Don't worry, that will flatten off uh, because what you're doing between each coat is you're giving it five minutes between each, each application. So spray it on, give it five minutes, go in with the next coat. That's to allow the varnish to self-level properly. And the instructions on these bottles are actually very, very simple. Quite simply, they simply say, I said simply like many times there, all you need to do is 17 PSI for your airbrush, 17 PSI, thin misty coats, multiple coats, give it five minutes between coats. That's it. That's it. That's why these are idiot proof. And we are back airbrushing done. Now, you know that thing where you record like 20 minutes of dialogue and doing stuff and it doesn't record? Yeah, that just happened. Uh, thanks Obama <sighs> anyway we are done airbrushing is done uh, we now have our four varnish examples and I have to say I've had a really good time with these and I've really enjoyed them and I'm going to give you a spoiler you need some now how do we get on well first of all we'll go for the ultra mat and I'll explain some bits about them in a minute but let's just show you the results ultra mat is it's just no shine whatsoever on that and that's what the plastic looks like by itself now we have the ultra matte that is just there's nothing there it's just flat as there's no shine whatsoever and this bit here at the top is bare plastic with sharpie written on it and there's just no remember that's what the bare plastic should look like sort of if i can get the light to bounce off it nothing nothing whatsoever the matte again looks fantastically flat and not particularly shiny there's a little bit of a shine on the plastic you can see and if you compare it to the ultra matte it's a little bit, if I can get it to, it's hard trying to get it to pick up the light. There's a little tiny bit of shine in there, not, not a massive amount, not a massive amount at all, but just a hint. It's a slightly more shiny. It's not quite satin, but it's got a little bit of shine. And if you can't, obviously you can't feel it, but you can actually feel the difference between this and this. This is kind of feels rough, not rough like it's powdery, but you can definitely feel there's a texture to it. This one is a bit smoother. So the matte and the ultra matte, if you're making a model that needs to not be shiny, either of these will do you fine. This is absolutely just flat as though. Uh, we have the satin, which is, as it says in the tin, a nice, lovely satin finish. Look at that. Now that's the plastic, and the plastic itself is kind of satiny. It's just plastic card. So that has returned the, the satin finish to this, to be basically what it was before I painted it. And that is really nice. And again, this feels smoother than that and smoother than that. So you can feel it getting smoother under your finger. Really nice finish. And then last of all, we have the glossy, which as you can see, is just, it's just shiny. It's just, if I can, where's the light gone? Where's it got there? And it's just shiny as, compare it to the satin. If you compare it to the satin, you can see massively the difference there between the two. Compare it to the ultra matte. It's just night and day. It's just completely night and day so i had good fun with all of these now i will say uh, i did some experimentations i did some experimentations because i'm used to using pledges of gloss varnish uh, and when i do pledges gloss varnish it's a mist coat and then two quite thick coats uh, and other varnishes i've used gloss products in the past have always been like thick wet coats you have to put on don't be tempted to do that uh, with this the instructions on these three are all the same like i said in the bit before uh, thin misty coats don't be tempted to use thick wet coats with the gloss it still needs to be done the same way as the other three it still needs to be thin misty coats it just will take you more coats it took this whereas these were all three coats uh, it took about seven coats of the gloss to get to that so I've used more there's more missing out the bottle it took more to get to that so with the gloss to get the nice glossy finish just keep going I mean if I did more coats over this probably get glossier and glossier but just keep going. Now it's counterintuitive because the, the way the varnishes or any real varnish or paint works is if you leave it for a little while, it will self level. And with a gloss, you want it to be as smooth as possible. And with a matte, you want it to be as rough as possible so it can disrupt all the light and make it all go in different directions. That's why it looks matte, not shiny. 
Um, when you do a gloss varnish, you do thick wet coats so they can all kind of self-level and flatten out and have no imperfections. That's why the gloss surface is gloss. With this, you're building it up in thin misty coats but it still comes out shiny so i don't know quite how that works now there are some imperfections in the surface you can see there that's not the that's not the gloss varnish that's me just spraying on the primer and the paint pretty haphazard they were there in the paint surface so yeah don't be tempted to go the typical route of using thick wet coats just stick with the matte coats with the, with the matte coats stick with the thin coats but just do more you might look at six seven eight coats or more depending on the finish you want uh, now these do say uh, like i said 17 psi the only difference is this stuff the ultra matte now, there's a reason for this the ultra matte uh, is 15 psi and it actually says on the back and i didn't realize this till i'd done this and then because i read that i did some experimentations with the matte with this it's 15 psi not 17 uh, and what you do is it just says multiple thin multiple thin misty coats effectively it doesn't say how many uh, and it dries within 12 hours not 24. there's a reason this is a different slightly slightly different process it's a slightly different product this isn't just a matte varnish it's a matte varnish or you can mix it into paints as a matting agent to matte down paints so they become more matte and um, so it's obviously got some slightly different formulation than these these are just probably the same thing with different levels of matting agent in them this has probably got almost none quite a bit and quite a lot because matte varnishes typically gloss varnishes with matting agent that's why you need to shake shake them vigorously to get the matting agent mixed in this might well be i don't mean i don't know this might well be a different product completely because it's, it has got half the drying time and it can be used as a matting agent i mean so can this probably but it won't have the same properties as this i suspect so this got half the drying time and it's 15 psi but don't overthink it i did that at 17 psi and it was fine uh what i did as well was with the mat after i read that and realized when i had done this I tried something out uh, what i did was i wanted to see if you could skip the five minute waiting time because the five minutes is for the varnish to flash off dry a bit crust off on the top and smooth out because it self levels so what i did with the mat uh, was i sprayed on the misty coat i then got my airbrush and just air dried it just air from the airbrush for like 30 seconds and kept an eye on it until all the shiny bits and flashed off and it just looked dry then i went over with the next misty coat and then aired it again just until it looked dry 30 seconds or so and then did it again so i did three coats but i skipped the five minute waiting time instead i dried it with sort of 30 seconds of air from the airbrush and it worked fine now if i'd done the five minutes it may well have come out a little tiny bit matte more matte than it is but that's fine so if you do want to skip i would probably say i didn't try it on this but it probably would work you could probably air dry it with the airbrush between coats and not wait five minutes for that you can because i've done it for these two you might be able to with the satin but i would suspect you couldn't with the glossy because you want this to self-level for these two you want them to self-level and get as smooth as possible so for these two just get the coat on there leave it for five minutes and also with especially with these two don't panic if it looks like little spots on the surface like little blobs and bulbs and that it will settle down it will flatten out don't panic about it the first few coats always look a bit gash don't panic it will settle out now we did do some other testing as well um one question you always want to ask uh, oh actually i'll come to that question in a minute i did want to see if the gloss uh, would work the same if i did it the way i do pledge because i'm used to doing pledge and like i said that's one mist coat and two very thick wet coats i tried that on this spoon now here's a spoon a uh, spoon is a fork this bit is black this is just bare black plastic and it's a little bit shiny but not much it's quite a textured thing it's like it's just bare plastic I basically sprayed a mist coat of the glossy and then two thick wet coats like I would with pledge uh, and this is how it came out now you might not see any problem with that it looks shiny it does but remember the spoon's black and now it's come out this kind of creamy milky color and it's also a bit patchy in places basically it's not designed to be put on in thick uh, wet coats so don't be tempted to use it like other gloss varnishes it will come out shiny but it's got this milky texture because that's not how you're supposed to use it that's me deliberately doing it wrong just to see what happens and it will come out the more that if you spray it thick it comes out like a milky fluid so yeah don't be tempted to do it like other gloss varnishes do it in thin misty coats and build it up it's counterintuitive for a gloss varnish but thin misty coats exactly the same as a matte varnish build it up slowly it'll just take you more coats one last thing uh, the big question with any gloss varnish or matte varnish i suppose depending on what you want to do but any gloss or satin varnish how does it affect metallics here is a metal spoon except it's not it's just black plastic spoon with c1 metalizer on it and it looks really nice uh, it was just black plastic shiny black plastic 
I just powdered, put some C1 metalizer powder over it, uh, and it looks really metallic. Take note of this nice metallic twinge here where it goes. Right, that's important because if we turn it over on this side and look, this is this side has had about three coats of the glossy. Now again, it's thin, misty coats, not big, fat, fat thick, wet coats. Thin, misty coats. And you can see it still looks metallic. It's just not quite the shiny. If you look at that sort of twinge there where the light is, it's not quite as reflective and shiny as that. It's lost a little bit of its luster. However, don't panic. That's kind of what most gloss varnishes do to metallics. Most of them, with the exception of maybe one or two, will do that. But what I found is with this test, if you've got a metallic powder like the C1 or the Ushi van der Rosen or anything like that, and you want to protect it, um, I mean, the C1 is pretty durable anyway. It doesn't need a varnish on it. But if you want to, um, then you could go over with maybe one or two coats of this. It will dull the metallic a little bit. It will spoil that beautiful metallic finish a little tiny bit. But it'll be just enough to protect it. Don't go ahead and put like five, six, seven, eight coats on like you do if you're trying to get a glossy varnish. Because all you'll end up with is grey with a gloss coat on it because the more you put on, the more it will dull down the metallic finish, but the more it will become like a glossy surface. Because it's only got two or three coats on there, it's not quite shiny, but it's not enough to dull the metallic finish down. So it's kind of a halfway step. It's just enough to protect it, but it does dull it a bit. But if I carried on putting more coats on, it would just end up look, looking like, like that, basically, gray with a, a shiny, glossy surface. So you can do metallics. I wouldn't recommend it. If there's any way to avoid putting metallics, uh, varnish on your metallics, try and avoid it. Uh, but that is going to do us. So what is my final conclusion? My final conclusion is these stuff are awesome. These stuff, these varnishes are awesome. For a finishing varnish, that would be really, really nice. Just be prepared to do a lot of very thin coats and carefully varnish. Um, for a satin varnish, for your weathering and everything else, brilliant, perfect. If you look at a lot of uh, Ammo's weathering tutorials, they use satin varnishes for things like pin washes. They don't use a full gloss. They use a satin for things like pin washes and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely. And for the mats, yeah, I'll be ordering some of these. These are these are just awesome. Uh, I've now found a varnish I can airbrush. Yes. Which means if I've got something I need to varnish and it's raining outside or cold and miserable, I can actually do it. I don't have to leave it sitting around for like weeks for nice weather. <laughs> Thank the Lord. So yes, so the mat and the ultra mat. Ultra mat, I'm, you're not going to beat that. That's just there's just nothing there. There's just, just flat as. But either of these will do for you if you if you're making your model not shiny. Uh, for figures, that'd be quite nice, actually, because it's got a little bit of a glint to it, but not much. If you're doing, say, clothing, that'd be perfect for clothing. If you're doing skin of a figure, that'd be nice, because it's got a little tiny bit of a, of, a, of a sheen to it. But there you go. You could even use satin if the person's supposed to be sweaty on the skin. But there you go. Absolutely recommended. Brilliant stuff. If you've not tried any of these, do grab yourself some. You can get them, obviously, from eModels, eModels.co.uk, uh, my channel sponsors and the people for whom I am making this video. But that's going to do us. So thank you again to uh, Pete, mate, and James, mate, for popping these over to me to try out. Do go and grab yourself some. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios, amoebas. <laughs>